My Leland Cypress is returning brown. What can I do? What's up, guys? My name is Mark Russell, and coming to you from the studio uh, with some answers for Leland Cypresses. Um, the overarching, simplest answer, if you don't want to watch the whole video, is Leland's kind of are horrible trees for Atlanta, for Georgia, for the South, because it's too hot, too cold, and water distribution is too sporadic. It stresses them. They get three fungi, uh, ceridium bot and cercospora, and they tend to die between 15 and 25 years. They're super expensive to try to prune. We do offer root stimulator service that effectively we inject the root system with a stimulator that causes the roots to grow more than the canopy, and that will help give Leland's a fighting edge over the course of, you know, three years, it allocates more energy toward growth. So that being said, I'm going to go into a little bit about Leland's and why you probably should never plant them, why you should choose Arborvitae, etc. So as I mentioned earlier, effectively Leland's in the South, it's like trying to put a, a, a an organ of the wrong blood type into a body that's like, get out of here. It's just so hot in the summer. It's so cold in the winter. And it, the, our rain is so sporadic. Now, Leland's are from the UK, right? And their rain is so much better, consistent. It's not as hot, not as cold. They thrive. They get to be 100 foot tall-ish, like really tall, right? And their wingspans get to be like 16 feet on each side, 32 feet-ish, really big. Here in Georgia, you're topped out at about 40 feet with a uh, max width at about 16 feet. The reason is they die before they can get that big. Why? Bottom line is contractors and homeowners alike, they want their privacy. They want it now. So they plan like, oh my gosh, what? Just let me just show you this. Okay, here, check this out. For sure, this is classic. Look at this, guys. You just look at Leland Cypresses. Look at how close they're always planted. I mean, are you serious? Like they grow 16 feet, people. Don't plant your Leland cypresses four feet apart from each other. And if you're going to, first off, don't plant them. Go with the Arborvitae Green Giants. But if you're going to do either, okay, watch this. I got to show you this real quick. If you're going to do either, plan on the fact that they're going to grow the eight and eight, okay? What you don't want is you don't want the branches to cross over themselves because what happens on that scenario is that it's allocating energy to grow these lower branches and then they block the light, then they have to turn those branches off because they're not photosynthesizing. Now they turn it off and all that energy they just spent, they have to just waste it and turn the branches off. So in other words, what you need to do is plant them 16 and 16, okay? And I get it. It's like they're super, super far apart. Um, let's see. Let's see if we can see any examples. Like, okay. These are really far apart, right? That's probably more than 16. But what you do is you plant them, like, but the problem is, is that when you plant them too close together, they drown out the light and they compete for water. So what you have to do is you have to plan for it. You have to, what you do is you plant them 16, and then you can put two in the middle or one in the middle. And then they grow toward each other. And once the tips start getting close, when the tips start to cross, you must clip them. So take the freaking middle ones out. Let Once they start to get close, you must clip it, not the tips, but the middle tree, okay? That way, the ones that are remaining at 16 and 16 can keep on growing until the tips are getting close. And then you'll have your privacy wall, but they won't be squishing each other because otherwise they're taking each other's light, stressing each other. They are secondly, taking each other's water because Leland's are so thirsty. And thirdly, um, they're spreading the disease, right? And now what we're talking about, let's talk about the disease real quick. So once you stress about planting them too close together, then what's going to happen is the stomata in the summertime, it gets super hot. And they're like, oh my gosh, this is so super hot. They start effectively kind of tree sweating. Their pores open. These little things called stomata on the needles open up. And then what happens is it rains and the, all the little fungi that are on there, which is bot, cercospora, and ceridium, a rain droplet comes along, goes boom, hits it and blows those fungi into the open pores all over the tree. And then this is what happens. What happens is the devastation 
uh-oh, you get it here. You get it here. You get it all over the place. Now, see, there's a nice row of Leland's. Doesn't have any, but you get what's called flagging. Okay, flagging like this. This is not flagging, by the way. This is probably, and that's not even a Leland, but that's probably someone, that's a dual stem and someone cut that. That's an issue of choking a tree off. This is flagging, okay? Right here, guys, is a classic example of sporadic, um, either, either three of those fungi attacking. So now you're like, well, Mark, how do I treat it? The first thing, if you want, um, you can, uh, you can root, deep root stimulate um, with a deep root feeder that uh, you, know, you can call us or any other tree service. But um, effectively what it does is it transfers the, um, all the allocation of growth from the top to growth on the bottom. And it, what you need is a good, healthy root system that can pull up the water. Okay, so that's, call us for that service if you want. But the other things that you can do is this. Number one, you can, hold on. Oh, you need to put two to three inches of mulch all the way out to the drip line, okay? Out to the tips of those branches, two to three inches of mulch. Do not stack it against the trunk. Trunks don't like mulch. It's called volca uh, volcano mulch. You do not want to make a little volcano against a trunk. There's no feeding happening on the trunk, okay? So once it gets up to the trunk, taper it. After that taper, out to the tips of the branches, drip line, two to three inches. That's number one. Well, technically number one is trim out the dead and dying branches using a lopper, which is totally irritating because I don't have my link. I'm going to put you on pause. I'll be right back. So here is the tool that you want to use as a disclaimer. I'd love it if you buy it with the link in this thing because I'll make about 50 cents. But this is it. This is what the pros use. Look, I know it costs $130, $142. It's a Jameson lopper. It extends to 14 feet. It allows you to clip out Leland's it is a super sweet tool, very, very sharp. I mean, that is a really nice tool that the pros use. Trust me, ISA certified arborist, this is the tool you want. Also, one little trick, when you're reaching up to lop and it's extended, hold on just a second. When it's extended all the way to the top and the pole starts kind of bending a little backward, pro tip trick, wrap the string around the front of the pole and so when it pulls back, the string supports it and keeps it straight. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to take that lopper and you need to go clip behind the, uh, behind the, uh, the brown, okay? So, but you need to get yourself a one to nine, one to eight mix of Clorox. Make sure it's fresh Clorox because, and that's eight, eight parts water, one part Clorox not the other way around, and in between cuts, make sure to dip the, the, the saw head in there to kill off any fungus. And also, once you're done, rinse it off. You don't want to let that stuff sit on your saw, your lopper. <coughs> but what you want to do is you want to get in here and you want to, let's see if we got a good example. You want to clip behind the fungus. So you want to get that stuff out of there. Uh, let's see here. This is a great example right here. Hold on. Okay, so where you would clip would be maybe right here. Like you want to get these two pieces out. So you would clip right here, okay? So right there. Oh, crud. So, sorry. So you clip right there, okay? So you get that piece and that piece out. Or on this one, you'd clip there or you'd clip there, okay? You want to clip on the next lateral going out. Maybe you could clip here. Okay, so the point being is this. Um... You go up, you make a clip, you take it, you dip your uh, lopper in the water, and you go up and do it again. We do it. We don't really love doing it, honestly, because it's super time-consuming. And honestly, consumers, you can do this yourself. For $142, you can get this tool, bo bottle of Clorox. You're good to go. Okay, once you get all the leaf litter down, phase two, rake it all up. You don't want the Petri dish effect of all that fungal infected material sitting on the base and you don't want to put mulch on top of that. Rake it all up. Number three, bring yourself in two to three inches of mulch. Get it all the way like we talked about. And number four, keep it watered, folks. Look, in Georgia, it's ridiculous. It gets so super hot. 
Okay. Like, I mean, right now it's like seriously desert on the ground when it doesn't rain for three, two, three weeks. I mean, like these Leland's are having to survive in that and there's no, it's like arid. So put the mulch on and get out there and put 30 gallons, 20 gallons in a week, you know, like every three days, they are thirsty, thirsty trees, put 20 gallons in. You're not going to kill them. Okay. Um, let's see. Other than that, uh, We've, we've covered the spacing. Did we cover the spacing? I think we did. 16 feet. And if you plan in between, once the tips start touching, clip them. Another thing people have called me before and said, why are my Delelands all dying on the inside? Well, because they're photosynthesizing on the outside. So dead branches on the inside of a Leland, totally normal. Okay, guys, that's it. If you would like Leland treatment, we come out, we inject the ground. It gives your Leland's or your uh, Arborvitaes a fighting chance. Um, and we also do this for a number of other types of trees. Give us a call, 770-Arborist. Um, other than that, hit me up in the comments. Love to answer any questions that you got. That is my quick Leland Cypress video. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to give me a call. All right, thanks, you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.